Ah, hail, noble tarnished by the light of the blessed earth tree. It is good to see you again. How fares thee on thine journeys through the lands between? Thine quest for the seat of Elden Lord? Oh, oh, ah, yes. If still struggling, then. Hmm. Well, if I may be so bold, I do notice that, um, well, your attire is sadly still somewhat lacking. You lack the, how do they say it, the drip to survive here in the lands between in style. Uh, some more magnificent armor and garb would certainly help your cause, your quest. And it just so happens that I have a patron who can provide you with that drip. Yes, it is this video's sponsor, Into the AM, those glorious clothiers, those purveyors of elevated everyday apparel. Uh, they will allow you to look magnificent, resplendent, and be comfortable at the same time. Not only that, but their clothing is easy to care for, so you needn't worry about finding a tailor to mend the rends and tears in your garb. For example, this beautiful t-shirt right here. Look at this samurai maiden drawing forth her fearsome uchi katana. Yes, magnificent, isn't it? Uh, that and much more could be yours for the mere pittance, a handful of runes. In fact, thou can acquire three such beautiful pieces for a mere 60 runes. 60 runes, that's nothing. And if you use the link at the top of the video description, thou can save one in ten of thine runes, which will help you level up faster and hopefully with the help of some delightful attire from our sponsors at Into the AM, face those fearsome bosses so that you might triumph and take your rightful seat as Elden Lord. Just make sure you click on through on that link down at the top of the video description so that you might experience the glory of Into the AM's beautiful, comfortable, easy to care for, exclusively licensed graphic designs. Once again, thank you to our dear patron Into the AM for their support of this video. Hail, tarnished, it is I, Nick, the ASMR nerd, and I welcome you back once again to the lands between in Elden Ring. The last time we wandered these lands, we visited the Academy of Rhea Lucaria and many of you requested that we continue our journey through this mystical place of learning. And so that is what we will be doing today. You might notice a few things different this time. For one, we will be experiencing this wander from the first person, which is a novelty here in the lands between, or so I'm told. And two, since our last wander, we have obtained a magical enchantment called Ray Tracing. This mystical technology, or magic if it is that, improves the quality of the lighting and shadows in particular that we experience in the lands between. And so the beautiful vistas will be even more 
gorgeous, with richer, deeper shadows and more true to life lighting. So, with all that said, let us begin. We find ourselves not far from where we ended our last wander in the Rhea Lucaria Academy. We have this great cog wheel turning away up here with its ornate spokes. We took one of these platforms from down below and rode it up to where we are now. And it is from here that we will begin wandering today. I believe it is late afternoon here in the lands between. And so perhaps we will experience a nighttime wander today. The Rea Lucaria Academy is, of course, a mysterious and somewhat foreboding place, but it has been for centuries a place of learning, and it, in theory, still is, though the students here are not to be trusted. Their minds seem to have been addled by the glintstone, perhaps. There are, nonetheless, scholars who still call these halls home. And the remnants of many classrooms can still be found in the academy. Many tools of learning are scattered about, but perhaps even more prominent are the massive piles and caches of magical glintstone, such as this. The glintstone is, of course, a source of magic, uh, some sort of mystical material that seems to allow for the channeling of magics here in the lands between. This is, of course, the light of grace, which blesses us on our journeys here. The glintstone, however, is something else entirely. Some scholars believe that the glintstone is the congealed essence of the stars, and perhaps the stars themselves our outer gods, or servants thereof, manifestations of some kind of greater power. But nobody truly knows. Perhaps some of the study in this very academy has been devoted to answering that question over the years. Look at this sleepy head. As with previous wanders here, I've taken the liberty of wandering through ahead of time and whispering these souls to sleep so that they won't be bothering us during our journeys here. They're just having a rest, so don't worry about that probably having sweet dreams. But much more interesting is our surroundings. This academy has a long, rich history, and much of that is reflected in the monuments, and decorations, and indeed sarcophagi that line the walls and halls of this place. This appears to be the sarcophagus of some 
great mage, and it looks like their glintstone staff has been placed with them even in death. A solemn reminder to the students, no doubt, that despite the power that they wield, their life is still finite. appears to be a table of alchemical instruments, perhaps, bottles and canisters, all gilded and ornate, and an open book someone was learning here recently, despite the fact that things are rather in disarray around here tumbled chairs, piles of books haphazardly stacked in the hallways, scattered all over the ground. That's not the way a true academic should treat a book. And indeed, many of these bookshelves look like they've been ravaged and simply left But I suspect much of this chaos came about with the fall of Queen Renala, the former headmistress of this academy. Many years ago, her students rebelled against her because she was lost in grief. Queen Renala the Moon Queen, as she was known, was once the consort of Radagon. Radagon. And he was her true love. But he left Queen Renala for Queen Merica. And that broke poor Renala. Uh, her ability to lead no longer uh, unquestioned, her students began to rise up against her and in time overthrew her and locked her away deep in the bowels of this academy. It's a tragic story. Some say she's still held prisoner in the great library to this very day, slowly losing what is left of her sanity. The work that went into constructing these great halls in the first place must have been immense. The detail on every surface is remarkable. Look at the fine patterning on this window. It's quite beautiful, casting light across all these strange devices, ancient scrolls. These scholars have been studying so hard, they do deserve a good nap. And of course, all throughout the academy, hanging from the ceiling, placed along the halls, we find bird cages. These bird cages, as I understand it, represent the cuckoos which are the symbol of the Carian royal family, of which Ranala was a member before she was cast down. 
It was the Carian knights who did her bidding and protected this realm, the academy, as well as Lyurnia of the Lakes as a whole. But when her leadership fell into question and they no longer saw her fit to lead, they turned against her. This remarkable chandelier amongst all these bird cages. Uh, it does look like night has fallen. I can see in the sky myriad stars. Strewn across the night sky and the great towers of Rhea Lucaria silhouetted in the foreground encircled by wisps of ethereal magic of knowledge contained within this, this great structure, these vaunted halls, is truly remarkable. So many tomes recording the knowledge of the ages. And here, of course, we have the faces of past great scholars, men and women of incredible learning. Well, in this case, men, I suppose. Lots of beards going on here. Many of these, no doubt, wore impressive glint stone crowns when they lived. Look at the detail of this gargoyle the banister. It looks like the cuckoos that are a symbol of the Karian house have fallen on hard times, or perhaps Perhaps they too fell asleep when I came by and sent all of these scholars off to dreamland. Yes, that's probably what happened. They too are just having a well-deserved nap. Hmm. Through these great doors here, lies the debate parlor, a magnificent room where all kinds of theses and defenses were held, and great debates amongst the great minds of the academy. But first, let's visit a smaller, more humble chamber off to the left here. It's down this very dark passageway, so let's turn on our lamp. so that we don't trip or bump into a wall. Now this chamber, as far as I know, it bears no grandiose name, but it is a beautiful wood-paneled room lined with countless bookshelves containing knowledge unimaginable. One could spend their entire lifetime reading these tomes and likely not get to the end of them. I 
and up here at the head of the room is some kind of altar with two candles and this strange hourglass-like item which we've seen elsewhere before here in the academy. I do not know its significance. And a painting of a great woman, I believe. This may be a painting of Queen Renala herself before she lost her mind to grief. It's difficult to say. There have been a number of great sorceresses that have come from this academy. The sorceress Selen being one you might be familiar with, but whoever it is, they look regal. She looks like she is giving a command, gesturing, and expecting it to be followed. Other paintings of... Oh, that's very awkward. Uh, well, really not contributing to the mess here. It's already messy enough as it is. Other scholars of great renown, no doubt. It seems like perhaps a beard is a sign of seniority or great wisdom in this institution. Many of these scholars possess magnificent beards. Another great chandelier up above. But let us return the way we came and go visit the debate parlor. For as magnificent as that last room was, the debate parlor is much more so. Ah, more paintings of great scholars. Perhaps founders of the academy. Lots of good beards. We'll tiptoe our way past the sleeping cuckoos. And we'll turn off our lamp. We don't need it anymore. And here is the magnificent debate parlor. Look at the grandiosity of this chamber. The ceiling far above, the chandeliers lining the hall, and the seats in which the scholars would sit, listen to, and engage in debate. And of course, above all, hanging in the middle of the chamber, the great moon symbol of Renala, from which she draws her magic. And scattered about copious amounts of glintstone. I do not know if Glintstone contributed directly to the corruption of this place, but it certainly seems that way given its prevalence.
throughout the academy. It almost seems like it's growing out of the cracks and crevices, like the sheer magic contained in this place is seeping out and crystallizing. And on the floor, an ornate seal, intricately carved. And the light of grace continues to guide us. more somber portraits of legendary scholars line the hall. That magnificent mechanical moon hangs above all. I wonder what it looks like in motion. Sadly, we will probably never know. Beautiful windows at the head of the hall as well. And magnificent gargoyles catching the light streaming down from above. And positioned all up and down the walls. Well, as beautiful it is as it is in here, I think it's time we leave the debate parlor behind. Well, maybe in a moment. Look at this. This is a great telescope, no doubt used by the learned astrologers of this place to study the stars and the moon, comets and the cosmos, trying to understand where does magic come from, what does it represent, is glintstone crystallized star stuff or is there something else at work? Is the moon the source of true magical power, as Renala believes? So many questions, but very few answers. Ah, there we have some female scholars, many great beards, but a couple of unbearded faces. And it would seem that as the night has worn on, rain has started to fall. And some wind has risen as well. Makes for a moody scene here outside the academy. Flames guttering in their braziers. the rain falls, and all, of course, basking in the glorious golden light of the earth tree. Well, 
lots of crabs out here. These small specimens are harmless. Their larger brethren, however, less so. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about encountering any here. This appears to be perhaps a fountain where it was once upon a time. Whatever water once flowed in it has long stopped. These beautiful, vivid flowers in the courtyard. I suspect they were once well kept and tended to. Now, though, these gardens are overgrown, wild. gorgeous golden sapling amidst the darkness. And here we have a good vantage point to appreciate the enormity of this institution vastness of the interconnected spires and arches, bridges, and halls that comprise the Rea Lucaria Academy. Despite being somewhat stormy, the rain and the wind are soothing. At least I find them to be so. The gentle pitter-patter of the rain the soft sighing of the wind Although the academy has largely fallen into ruin, there is still peace to be found here. If you just slow down and know where to look. For example, these souls are resting. Sweetly slumbering. I do believe the dawn is arriving. It seems like it's getting brighter by the moment. Look at those moody clouds in the sky. driven by the wind. The ornamentation of the architecture and the decoration here never ceases to amaze me. Incredible amounts of detail. Such work could only be achieved with magic.
great library in which Queen Renala has been kept for so long against her will lies up there in that great tower. But we will not be going up there today, for I have another idea. As much as I find the Rhea Lucaria Academy beautiful and awe-inspiring, I do believe it is time that we move on to wander elsewhere in the lands between. And it so happens that there is a magical device nearby which will instantly teleport us away from this place to somewhere else. I believe we will avail ourselves of this device. As soon as I'm done appreciating the beauty of this place, look at the way the light illuminates the flowers and grass, blowing in the wind. This above the door might be the Carian Royal Crest, although I'm not certain. As ever, the detailing around this doorway and up this facade is just remarkable. And also, slowly being reclaimed by nature, covered in ivy winding its way up. As is much of this courtyard, it is. With wisps of magic glittering, inviting us towards it to take a chance and discover where it leads. Well, it so happens that I already know. Perhaps you do as well. So, let's step on through, and I will see you on the other side. And just like that, we find ourselves far outside of the Rea Lucaria Academy, in the Church of Vow. This ruined holy place is, in fact, the very location where Queen Renala was wed to Radagon. And, as we know, that holy vow was not to last. But, it is still a place of great significance. And here we find Muriel, who conducted that ceremony 
so long ago. This ancient tortoise is a friendly sort, much friendlier than most in the lands between. The pastor of vows, as he is known, he too looks fairly sleepy though, so we will leave him be. When you're as old as Muriel, you've earned your rest. And through the long, broken windows at the front of the church, we can see the distant spires of Rhea Lucaria, shrouded in the mists of Laernia. As beautiful as it is there, I am happy that we have left those halls behind. An evil lurks there, something insidious, malevolent, as well as something very sad. And perhaps that is Renala herself who brings that aura to the academy. Well, my friends, I do believe that this is where we will end our wander for today as the new dawn rises here over the Church of Vows. Thank you once again for joining me here in the lands between. And I look very forward to having you back here again next time. Farewell for now, Noble Tarnish. And of course, I would be remiss if I were not to thank those legendary tarnished, those heroes who support my content on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Here you can see all their glorious names, and there's one particular tier of supporter, the Fus Roda tier, who gets a very special spoken shout out in each of my videos. Our Fusro Dot tier supporters for this video are Rango Steel, Jake Lufney, Black Tooth Bob, Drummer Brit, Angel Garcia, Ragnar Ragnarson, Dragoon 88, and Captain Vanquisher. We owe all of these glorious tarnished our gratitude. All of the ones you see here. I appreciate the support on Patreon and YouTube, of course. And if any of you, dear viewers or listeners, would like to acquire some exclusive benefits, such as early access to my videos and your name on this special thanks page. Well, you can find links down in the video description to my Patreon and my YouTube. Thank you once again to all these kind supporters. <laughs>